Hi, I'm Gary Bembridge of Tips for Travellers. In this video, I'm going to tell you the six things that I believe you absolutely need to know about the Holland America Line before you cruise with them. First of all, who is Holland America Line best suited for? It does tend to have a reputation for attracting a slightly older cruise, and that's partly because it has a very traditional cruising experience. So if you're looking for a fairly traditional cruise and on board you're not looking for ice rinks, bowling rinks and climbing walls, but you're just looking more for bars, lounges, some enrichment, some entertainment, cooking classes and a fairly traditional approach to dining. Holland America is a great line for you. Most cruises are likely to be their 50s, 60s and above. Saying that, there are a lot of families who go on Holland America, particularly in the summer vacations. They are very used to catering for solo travellers. They're also used to taking on people who might be in a wheelchair, so they have accessible cabins. They have tours which are wheelchair friendly. You're going to find on board most of the people are likely to be American. And you'll find the onboard experience is US focused. But certainly if you're looking for a traditional cruising experience, Holland America is a great line for you. So the second thing you need to understand about Holland America is their fare. What does it include? And importantly, of course, what does it exclude? First of all, of course, it includes your accommodation. So whether you've booked an inside cabin through to a suite. Second thing it includes is meals. Breakfast, your lunch, your dinner can either be taken in the main dining room or it can be taken in one of the other complementary venues such as the Lido Market or the pizza place or the burger place. In the dining room in the afternoons they have afternoon tea which is included within the fare. The other thing that's included when it comes to drinks are the followings. Regular tea, regular coffee, hot chocolate, lemonade, iced tea and of course water. You also get access to basically all of the facilities with one key exception which are the cabanas which are an area where you pay to have access now, if you have kids, the access to the kids club is also free. So between the ages of three and 17, they have club howl. Entertainment is also included in the fair. And there's a couple of things that I really want to draw your attention to on Holland America. One of the big innovations and things that are rolling out across the fleet is what's known as the music walk. Four different and varied venues. First of these is known as Lincoln Center Stage. This is a partnership with the Lincoln Center which is one of the world's leading centers for performing arts. Here you have classical concerts and various recitals. A little bit further along is B.B. King's Blues Club. You have the B.B. King's All Stars Band and every single night they have a number of shows. The third one and probably the most popular is Billboard On Board. Here you have two pianists and singers facing each other and each evening they do a series of shows around different themes. Then of course you have what's known as the main stage. This is the big theater where they hold the production shows and have guest entertainers and during the day they may have some enrichment lectures here as well. Other really important things that I wanted to note that are included within the fair is you have digital workshops which are in partnership with Windows, Microsoft, also a partnership with America's Test Kitchen where you have various cooking demonstrations and displays uh, right throughout the cruise. They also have a partnership with O Magazine, so the Oprah Winfrey Magazine, where they have various wellness activities like meditation, a book club. They also have a partnership with BBC Earth, so they'll have lots of activities and programs or shows featured around the you know, wildlife, uh, the nature. So what's not included within your Holland America Fair? The first of these are gratuities. So gratuities at the time of recording are $13.50 per person if you're in a balcony or inside cabin. If you're in a suite, that goes up to $15 per person per day. 15% will be added to all drinks bills and 15% will be added to any treatments that you have within the spa. And also in the casino, if you want to tip, you need to tip separately. The second cost are drinks. Alcoholic beverages and specialty teas and coffees are not included in your fare. Now what's important to know is you can bring basically one bottle of wine on board and there's no charge for that if you drink it within your cabin. When you come back from excursions, if you do bring on board any alcohol, it's taken from you and it's kept to one side until the end of the cruise. There's a whole range of drinks packages available and they range from very simple soft drinks packages right through to ultimate drinks packages. The third thing that's not included in your fare is excursions. You can either book with Holland America Line and go on their tours, which they do guarantee then if there's any problems, they're running late, the ship will wait for you. There are independent providers who will sell similar tours but they don't have that guarantee. Then of course you could do things which I often like to do in some ports, which is hop on hop off buses because they often call at the port where the Holland America ship's calling 
Now, although a lot of dining is included within the fare, there are a number of specialty dining options. And depending on the ship, they, they differ slightly. The ones that you should be aware of are the Pinnacle Grill. This is their steak and seafood restaurant. It's something that Holland America are very proud of. And you pay at the time of recording $35 per person to dine in there. One of my favorites, which is on many of the ships, is Tamarin. This is an Asian fusion restaurant and you pay $25 per person at the time of recording to go. There's also on many of the ships an Italian option which is called Canaletto. You pay $15 to go to Canaletto. Rudy's Sal de Mer option is held about once every seven days on a cruise within the Pinnacle Grill and this is a big seafood fest and that costs around about $45 per person. Now the third critical thing you need to know is the dress code. So basically they have in the evenings anyway, a smart casual approach, which means that actually jeans, as long as they're not ripped and torn, are actually fine in the main dining room and even you can get away with t-shirts. Shorts, tank tops are not allowed in the dining restaurants at all in the evening. Now roughly two nights out of every seven on a cruise are gala nights where they do ask people to dress up a little bit more. You know, so what I often do is just take some smart trousers and some long sleeved you know, button up shirts. Some people do like to wear jackets, some people like to dress up even more. So for ladies, you know, what ladies would wear is dresses similar to what you might find at a sort of a daytime wedding. So quite dressy, but not massively dressy. On gala nights, you can wear jeans in the casual dining restaurant. So the dress code is smart without being very formal. And so you shouldn't worry if you don't like particularly dressing up a lot. Now, Holland America have relooked extensively the way that they deal with excursions and they've created a new umbrella which is called Explorations Central. They have taken over the crow's nest and converted to what's known as EXE Central. You have the tour desk there, then you have the EXE guides which are the staff that man the desk that help you understand the destination and give you tips if you want to self-explore. You have some interactive tables where you can find out more about the ports and what's going on. You'll find leaflets about the different excursions and attractions. You'll also find there's various books about the destinations. You have EXE talks, which are about the destination or the history of the destination. You also have EXE encounters where they'll often bring local entertainers or craftsmen on board so you get some immersion into the port that you're calling on. Then on the television, there's an EXE channel which will have highlights of the different ports you're calling on or documentaries linked to the destination or area that you're traveling through. So if you've booked a cruise on Holland America's two critical things that I recommend you do before you go. Log into, on the website, the Cruise Personalized. You can download your luggage tags, you can download your e-documents that you need to check in. But very importantly, you can start to book things like your drinks packages, bar treatments, all your excursions, and you can also book your specialty dining. The second thing I'd recommend you do is go to Cruise Critic and look for the roll call for Holland America Line and look for your cruise and find out if there's going to be a Cruise Critic meet and mingle held on board. And it's a great way, it's held at the beginning of the cruise. There's normally free drinks, free snacks, and it's a chance to meet other people. Now my sixth tip is how do you make the most of your time on board? The one tip that I would have that will really help you maximize your time on board is the app, which is called the Holland America Navigator app. It's completely free to use. It does work through Wi-Fi, but you're not gonna pay any Wi-Fi charges. And on this, you can do a number of things. It has a daily program. And the great thing about that is you can create your own personal daily program by selecting the items you want. So it'll just show your daily program for the day. It also lets you book excursions. It also lets you book some of your dining options, your special dining options. Another great feature is you can also look at your account balance. You don't have to go to the front desk to keep a track day by day of what you're spending. So if you're planning to travel on Holland America, I hope these tips have really helped you. As I mentioned, it's a traditional cruising experience. It's a premium experience. I think the ships and the decor are very beautiful. I like its link back to its old maritime heritage. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you watched many more of my videos because you'll get much more travel inspiration, advice and tips. Thank you.